back to Stitching Big Things with Hallie. I'm Hallie. I want to welcome you. Today is Friday, June 22nd, 2020. And I want to thank those, thank those who uh, watched last week and uh, commented. And um, if you're new, welcome to the channel. We appreciate it. This is, of course, a channel about cross stitch. So hopefully you're in the right place. I thought today um, I'm going to show you a little bit about what I did last week, but I also want to do a whip parade. I thought I've got a handful of projects that I'm working on and I thought it would be fun to kind of here at this middle point of the year kind of go through and and get a good feel for where I'm at uh, as we're proceeding down the road. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with what I did last week, which you guys have seen these. I do, all right y'all, I have a bag problem. I'm just letting you know. These happen to be uh, the Garon Toten bags. Love them. I love these. this big size. It's perfect. It fits. It doesn't always uh, Velcro close, but that's okay. It keeps everything together. Um, and I graduated up to this big size. And I am a member of their Bag of the Month Club. Um, and love them. Can't wait to get my new bag every month. And um, rotate projects out. So it's super fun. So... This particular one you saw last time. Get my needle there. This is my gal that I always call Autumn Fairy, but she is Red Maple Fairy from Heaven and Earth Designs. Artwork by Jamie Burkett Griffith. Um, love her. I was working on the middle of her forehead here. I ended up doing a little more of her eye. Got a little more of these uh, leaves done. Uh, and a little more down here with her hair. I just kind of bop around with Pattern Keeper. I do whatever color I want, finish that color up, and move on to the next section. So, there is her. Worked on her quite a bit. Actually finished one of my, uh, uh, in Full Coverage Fanatics, I um, do the park challenges. Um, for every park, you stitch 4,000 stitches. And then um, you complete that park, and I am working on that. And I was actually able, I had about another thousand stitches, and I completed her uh, park. I can't remember which one, but one of the parks I completed with her. So then I updated. Here's my next beautiful Garon Toten bag. I love this Christmas design with these lovely little Christmassy words inside. This was is my Stitch in Mommy project. Uh, the temperature tree where every day is a temperature and I wrapped it up yesterday so as you can see here in Texas we are getting good and hot except for yesterday yesterday was awesome we had a beautiful day it was about 83 degrees so it is that tiny little yellow one right there um, amongst all of that red so it was a beautiful day yesterday um, I hope it was where you guys were as well. This next project you guys have never seen. Uh, this arrived on Saturday. I had gotten to contact with a lady on Facebook and she is a, a new fabric dyer that is um, working to get her uh, fabric line up and she needed some models stitched. So she asked and I of course said uh, she put out a call and I of course said I would love to do that so this is the project she wanted me to stitch for her this is the legend of Kelpie um, maybe not an item that I would have stitched myself but I'm really enjoying it it is super fun it's going super fast um, and it's on a beautiful fabric let me show you here is this beautiful fabric Legend of Kelpie, I have quite a bit, as you can see. I still have a little bit more to go up here, a lot of fill in, and of course I gotta get this guy all filled in. But look at this beautiful blue fabric, you guys. It is gorgeous, it is so soft. I don't know what the base is, I don't really have. It's a 28 count, I'm going two over two. Over two. Um, but I, I love it, it has been a joy to stitch on, it's beautiful. Um, and so I, as soon as I get some more information from her, I will be sure to pass along. Um, I know she, just like every other dyer, is having trouble getting her fabrics right now. So when I know things are up and going for her and I get this back to her because it's not going to be much longer, 
um, I'll make sure I spread that message and get you let you know how to get a hold of her because she has gorgeous fabrics, gorgeous colors. And who can't have more fabric? That's what I say. So this is why I spent the majority of my week on Kelpie. So that's what I worked on this week, those three projects. I know I was going to do um, the fancy ladies, uh, the playing card. I didn't get to her. She's going to get worked on this next week because I need to get her done for, for Whipgo. Okay, so other projects. Love my skulls bag from Garen Toten Bags. Again, like I said, I have a, I have a bag problem. Um, I'm sure like many of you do. <laughs> That's not a bad problem to have, in my opinion. Uh, this one is a Heaven and Earth Designs project. Again, um, Cookie Fairy by Randall Spengler. Love this little guy. Um, just, I, I've had this one for many, many years. Started it. When I went back to it, figured out I actually had the wrong size of fabric. So I had this little corner done. Had almost the first page of the corner done. And I just restarted it. Um, use it in Pattern Keeper. Again, can't speak enough about that. And here's where I'm at with her. Um, so as you can see, I started just working. Now that I can use Pattern Keeper, I've started working on the fairy, getting her in. And then I'm just going along and working in, in my, uh, what space I have open. I'm just working to get things filled in kind of by color. I'm um, getting the big things knocked out and slowly working my way to uh, full. So there's that project. I love this one. So it's a joy to work on. Um, and this is 25 count easy grid. Um, I'm doing one over one. So it's perfect coverage. That's the first time I've ever done one over one um, on that size count. And it's so far, it's as you can see from the quarter, it's great. The coverage is lovely. Um, here's this lovely little bag. I love this. This one came around obviously around the Christmas time. Has the green inside. So cute. Um, I know they have a Facebook group and they, you know, a couple times, maybe it's every other week, maybe it's once a month, they do, um, they put up a sale, um, usually two o'clock on a Saturday. Well, you know what, it may be two o'clock their time, maybe one o'clock my time, I can't exactly remember. But if you go to the Garon Toten Bags webpage, they will be able to guide you through. They'll let you know when one's coming. They give you a sneak peek of all the fabrics that are coming up, and you gotta be fast. Um, now that I'm in their club, I don't really try to get in there too much. I, I, I've got enough coming and I've got enough um, gathered up, and I, I love the ones I get. But it is super fun to look at what they've found. Um, they find beautiful items, uh, beautiful fabrics, and uh, Ronnie creates beautiful bags that are functional and just tremendous. I can't say enough about them. Okay, this next one, this was my um, my unicorn. I got it from, I won it on an auction uh, for Bendy, from Bendy Stitchy for one of her um, auctions that she had. And it is uh, Mirabilia, um, what is she called? The Shoe Lady of the Flag? I can't remember. You guys know her. You love her. She's hard to find. You can't get her. She's not printed anymore. Um, she's lovely. So I got her and I got to give my money to a good cause, which was lovely. I am doing her on We the People um, fabric, of course. I am doing, she's gold, and you're like, wait a minute, where's all that blue? I'm doing the blue conversion that I've seen on Facebook. I contacted some people, and if you just put, I think it's Lady of the Flag. Um, if you just search for the hashtag, you will find, um, there's multiple conversions. I've seen a light blue, this one's gonna, is a dark blue. Um, she's beautiful, no matter what you do her in, what you do her on, you cannot go wrong with this one. It's gorgeous. If you find her, you like her, and you can get a hold of her, she is definitely something you want to do. This is um, the We the People fabric from Fabric Flare. Um, 28 count, 2 over 2. It's going to be gorgeous um, as I keep working on her. The next project I have, again, 
wintery bag. I'm sure this was a January, this was a January bag, I believe. Gorgeous, cute little wintery stuff. This has got a little different project in it. Um, this is from Hands On Design. And they this came out this year at Market. So relatively new. There's four patterns. I just pulled out one so you could see. Uh, this is, there's eight of these little ornaments that come out. They're just on cardstock, um, which is nice. And then at the bottom, there's a few rows of the Secret Santa. So you build uh, through every pattern a few extra rows, and then you'll end up with a ninth um, ornament. So super cute, all Santa based, uh, right up my alley. It's a small one. You guys, I actually do small ones. Um, I just fit them in, they're easy, they're quick. Um, and with all these big projects, sometimes it's nice just to have a little finish here and there. So these, just so you guys know, 32 count vintage Tiffany is what this is shown on. That's what I'm stitching it on. It's by Fabrics by Stephanie. It's all the recommended colors. I even did the little bobble at the bottom. I bought the whole package. I got this package from uh, Crazy Annie Stitching. She did a pre-order type thing right before market. And so that's where I get her, get this from. Autom it's like an automatic. When they get the stuff, they send me the next set of patterns. So I'll have four more of these coming. In fact, two I've been notified. I've already paid for and they're probably going to be on the way, which is good because I can stitch them in July. So I've got four of these done because there's four. I did not get this one centered correctly, but it's going to be fine. I don't need, I, I don't need this much space. Um, um, the lady who does hands-on design, I can't think of her name. I've lost it in my head. She actually showed us how to take this size of fabric and put nine on it. It's great, you can do that. It's just a little more thinking than I wanted to do. I actually bought a second piece of fabric. So number nine will just go on a second piece. And then this is just gorgeous fabric. Who can't just find something to use this for? So whatever's left, I'll use for other items. So let me come in and show you real quick each one. Holly Old St. Nick, super cute. No chimney, no problem. Now you will notice on some of these that, particularly, let me show you this one. And um, Merry and Bright is down there at the bottom, and of course we've got Silent Night up here. Look at this Merry and Bright one. As you can see, she's got these little uh, random stitches kind of around, and I uh, thought that that might it just wasn't what I wanted to do. So I just left them out. That's the beauty of this. You can just adjust it, make it the way you want it. Um, I loved everything else about it. And, you know, sometimes those little random stitches are hard to get to get the back looking nice. So, um, so there's those four. Um, I'm looking forward, like I said, the next two should be coming. I'm looking forward to seeing those. Okay, my next project, my lovely, this was the February bag. And this is my project that I started on Leap Year, the Leap Year, Leap Day Sal. Um, I am doing a long dog sampler, doing Castles in the Air, one of my very favorites. Um, I did get Pandemic, not to worry, and I may start that soon. I have a handful, and I have gotten gathered up Quite a few um, hanks of silk and I think I'm gonna do some of these with my hanks of silk just on some regular fabrics so I'm working on getting those kind of bundled up uh, so that when I get a new start or when I'm feeling a new start I'm ready to go let me show you what I stitched this on this is just I don't I don't know the name it was a random silvery um, fabric that I got at a the needle workshop over in Dallas. So this particular, it's very silver. It kind of looks white on here, so it's really hard. The problem with this is this silver has got a lot of purple in it. So the floss color that I used is Gentle Arts Royal, what was it? Gentle Arts Royal Purple. 
and it's really hard to see on here you guys but this is really 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 dark purple with a lot of blue royal blue and this fabric it pulls the purple of this fabric and it is it in in real life it's stunning it I can't I'm not a purpley girl and and when I saw these two things together I kept trying to put blue with this and blue with and the lady's like oh no honey you need purple and she plopped purple on this and I couldn't have gotten out of there fast enough I was ready to start it so um, it is beautiful in person um, so can't wait to get back to this little guy I need to do that very very soon and, and seeing pandemic definitely is making me need to get back to stitching on this. I'm getting that one started too, because why not? Okay, this one is one that's really kind of close to it. Probably the closest I've got to a finish other than those ornaments. This is a small Garen Toten bag. So you can see the difference in size. Good size difference. I can't remember exactly what their measurements are. They're about the same length, but this one's much wider. This is perfect. I've got, I want to say it was an 11 by 11. A few snaps. Might have been that. 11 by 11, I think, in there. But it, when you slip it in, I always take it off because when you slip it in, it, um, it really rubs against the side. I've not ironed this, so please do not judge. Let me show you this first. Let me show you this give you what I'm doing. So this is from Glendon Place. Uh, it's the Bird of Paradise uh, mandala. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, anything with, excuse me, those bright colors, I just love. You, I, I am absolutely in seventh heaven. So, and this one has a ton of beads. So you'll see I'm almost done with the stitching and there's a lot of places like this whole center stuff in here is beads. All these little circles are beads. There's beads in the border. So um, it's just going to be gorgeous when I get this done. This one is, I, it's all called for. So I'm doing the 28 count chime. Uh, it's a cashel linen by Picture This Plus. It, I'm doing it two over two with all the called for colors. The called for colors, colors sorry, happen to be dinky dyes. I love dinky dyes. This was the first time I'd ever stitched with silk. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. If you can, um, I, I bought it as a as a in a group. When you go to the Glendon, Glendon Place, you can buy all these things individually. I just gathered them all up because I wanted it to look just like this. So I gathered them all up, um, and it was my first experience. It has been a joy. Um, if I could afford to stitch with silk all the time, I just might. <laughs> that is how beautiful it doesn't. It doesn't seem to knot up on me. It it doesn't fray a whole lot. Uh, must be the way I stitch. It, it it's just wonderful. So anyway, here is where I'm at, working my way around that uh, border. Um, the fun part is just really trying to you know with whatever color I end up making sure that the next section kind of joins that color so that you get a fairly even. I don't want it to be odd or, or wonky in any place. So. A little bit longer, a few more days. This is on my whip go. I think it might even be two more times on my whip go. And I think I've got it for a thousand or maybe even two thousand stitches a piece on my whip go. So I, I, I'll get pretty close to finishing that. I'm hoping. Hopefully, I'll get that finished up by the end of the year. Okay. And. This little guy has been super fun. This is a Cooler Classics chart. This one is the Golden Gate Avenue. I loved it. I love houses. I'm going to bring that in so you can see. Um, I love to stitch the geometric houses. I love the bushes, the colors on this one. Again, if, if you're colorful, I'm probably interested in you. So um, this one is... This is not a Garen Toten bag. I got this from a lady um, on Facebook. I was last year in the School of Magical Stitches, so I did get some bags like these. They're lovely. They're gorgeous. I don't need to see, I don't need the the, um, the part where you can see in them. I 
touch all of these enough, I kind of know what's in my bag. And if I open it and, and see something I wasn't expecting, I go, oh, now I just want to stitch on that. So that's not a problem. I don't seem to have a problem with that. So here is where I'm at on this particular project. This, uh, d these designs, um, I think I got this off of Etsy, off their, um, their cooler classic charts. Um, so you, I think you, I got that off of Etsy. Um, need lots of backstitching. I don't mind backstitching. Backstitching is okay with me. There's probably even a good number of French knots. I'm okay with that. Easy to do. I love how it makes um, a pattern come alive. Um, I'm really happy when I don't have any backstitching, but I'm super happy when I do have backstitching. It doesn't affect my feelings too much one way or the other. So I have this one a couple more times on Whipgo as well. I think, in fact, it's one of the Whipgo says I need to get house number two done. And this is only house number one. So I need to get cracking on this guy and start working on him um, so that when that one gets pulled, I am ready to wrap it up and get it checked off my list. And that's the way the Whipgo goes. You don't have to do... Like I can work ahead and be ready when, if, if I have time, if I need to work behind, if I'm, you know, got a project that I can't quite get done, like this one. <laughs> uh, I was a Slytherin um, over in the School of Magical Stitches last year. I am doing um, the Disney version of that um, this year. I'm not doing any of the weekly challenges. I am strictly doing the group challenges where you're stitching a certain amount. Um, it allows me to work on what I wanna work on, lets me meet my whip go goals, lets me touch things as I want to. I don't have to fit things in, but I get to count my points towards, my stitches towards something, and it's, it's a reason to count my stitches, and it's fun to watch the progress. So this, sorry, let me get out the, picture for y'all. This one you saw last game, last year. This is Royal Games 2. This is the one I couldn't think of her name. Royal Games 2. I was supposed to stitch on her last week. I did not get to it because Kelpie showed up. So that became my priority. I had told um, the lady that I am stitching that for is Amy West. And the, I had told Amy that I would have it done in four to six weeks. That's the timeline we agreed on. And uh, here tomorrow, uh, it'll, I will have had it a week. So I want to get get it finished up so I can get it back in the mail so that she has it certainly by the end of four weeks. Um, this I stitched on 14 count, I'm sorry, 18 count white opal. It's just, um, I got it at the store. It is opal. I thought it should be funny. She's very, she's going to be very sparkly and beady um, as well. Doing two over Two over two on her, no, two over one, I bet. 18 count, yeah, two over one on her. Um, and I need to get going because I need to get her done. So we, you will see her again, I'm sure, next week, hopefully, with some body parts included. And I'm thinking about doing her skin no, I'm doing one over one. So I'll probably just do a one over one. I don't think I'm doing a two over one. So I, I would like to do, I've never done a Mirabilia uh, skin one over one. So I'm, I'm going to try that. I've seen enough people talking about it and thinking about it that I thought it would be fun to do. Again, this one you saw last week. Uh, a lot of you commented on it, ink circles. It is a gorgeous pattern. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I'm doing this middle version right here. I'm doing it just on a regular 28 count white um, that will get a bath here very shortly when I get her done. Um, two over one, or two over two, sorry. Uh, two over two, so she's super simple um, and just gorgeous. So I'll keep working and plugging along on her as well. So that finishes my whip parade. That's kind of everything that I've got uh, on an ongoing basis. So let's talk. I did get a few things of haul this week. Um, I am a member of the Picture This Plus Fabric Club of the Month and my fabric came in this week. I get the neutral and a bright 
Um, that's what I've signed up for. And I've signed up for the half yard. Half yard? Half quarter? Whatever it is. Um, I get the... This one says 27 by 36. So whatever that is. I get the bigger piece. Um, not the full piece, but the bigger piece. This one, holy cow, y'all. This is yellow. Mine does not have a lot of modeling. I know some of the people, the other people I've seen has a lot of, lot more white splotchiness to theirs. Mine does not. Mine is just virtually straight yellow. So I get a 28 count Lugana, and this is called Summer. It's exactly what it makes me think of. Um, it makes me almost want to do like a some sort of cocktail uh, stitch and, and with some bright colors and um, put that on there because it makes me think of cocktails during the summer. And the neutral that I got this month is absolutely gorgeous. I'm hoping you can see how much modeling is in there. It is lovely. It is uh, a chocolatey brown. The darker swatches are, are a light chocolate and um, it, it's just absolutely gorgeous. This is called Fawn and it does tell me on the thing that it is new for 2020. So I'm excited. I get a 28 count Lugana. Also, again, I get the, the bigger size. The fat half, I guess, is what you call it. So those are the two things that I got uh, from Hall. I also did download Pandemic, um, like I told you. Definitely going to start that at some point and waiting on the um, silks that I have ordered to come. They're coming from overseas, waiting for those to come with no hurry. And then we'll start um, planning where those are going to go in. So plans for this next week. I, for the first time, am going to do Jolly July. Super excited about it. Uh, since July is actually going to be next week, I will bring those projects along with me and I'll show you what I'm going to do, what my plans are for Jolly July. Those Santa ornaments are in Jolly July. So the, that's one for sure. I've got a few, some much bigger projects, a couple more hades that I think I'm going to get started and get into my rotation so I can work on that. Uh, Whipgo. Two things that came up today. Jessie Marie did her Whipgo update for July. The numbers, if you haven't seen her video, if you don't want to be, if I'm spoiling anybody, run over there and see it real quick. I'll give you a second to go. Her numbers that she pulled were five and eight. So five for me, I have a note, it was a new start on something small. I'm probably going to count. Um because it's I, I noted it as a start and a finish on something small. I will probably count that as one of my ornaments because I will do those in July. Because um, I did not specify, I just said anything. I was kind of waiting to see what I wanted to work on at the time. And then number eight was a winter uh, project start. So basically one stitch, which how convenient was that? The world, the universe is operating in my favor. Uh, for Jolly July because I have a couple Hades um, and a couple of big projects that I want to start um, that are very wintry, uh, Christmassy themed. So I'm super excited. All of that just came at the right time. I'm going to be able to knock those out and keep on moving on. My goal will be to do, um, if I have anything, uh, whip go, well my whip go is going to join right in there. Uh, I am going to try to continue a little bit on my full coverage fanatics tiers. I'm still working away at those. So some of those um, bigger projects, I will um, be continuing with those here and there. I really want to focus on the Christmas if I can, but I'm in a good spot. I've completed tier one. I've completed tier two. I only have two left on tier three, and I've, I've only got one done on tier four. So I've got four left on tier four and all of tier five. So... At, at a halfway point, I'm about halfway on those tiers, which I think is a great place to be. They have been really instrumental in helping me make sure I'm able to keep moving on those full coverage pieces. Um, and since, you know, these are the two I've got going right now, it's been fun to watch them. And with Pattern Keeper, it's been a blessing. So, um, it's all coming together. It's all working out. So, okay, well, I think that's it for the week. 
Thank you so much for joining me again. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I loved all the comments last week. Um, it's been fun starting to uh, get to know everybody. Uh, so please don't hesitate to comment. Make sure you subscribe if you find this interesting. And don't, for click, don't forget to click the little bell so you can get notifications when I put out a new video. Okay, I think that wraps it up. Thank you so much. Don't forget, keep stitching those big things. We'll see you next week. Bye.